Hello, this is April 14th. Uh, um, Ambentoric seminar from New York. And today we're happy to have JB Nation from University of Hawaii uh, giving a talk on uh, error correcting codes. So JB is a, my longstanding collaborator and uh, co-author in uh, many papers, but also a book on lots of quasi varieties that was published by Springer last year. But JB definitely in, um, involved in many different studies and it's one of his long interests in, um, in this topic. And so we're happy to have him, please. Okay, good morning. Um, so uh, this is me on single deletion error correcting codes and I'll explain everything. Uh, basically, uh, we have a visitor, uh, here, uh, Manabu Hagawari, uh, who was here uh, in overlap with Kira 11 years ago, 12 years ago, something like that, uh, or another year. And uh, we've been working off and on on uh, coding theory since then. Uh, so the seminar is a rather eclectic group uh, listed there, but Manabu is running the seminar. We have students, we have uh, different uh, colleges around town. And uh, last no November, uh, uh, Kazuhisu Nakasho <laughs> came through. And uh, so we're counting him as a member of the seminar, even though he's actually at home <laughs> teaching now. Uh, the classical sources on this uh, go back to a paper of Levenstein in 1966, uh, when I graduated high school. Uh, so it's an old problem. And uh, then uh, Neil Sloan has a, a paper from about 2002, which summarizes the knowledge up to then. And then there's been a lot of progress. And I should at least mention uh, the papers of uh, Kiyavash at Urbana. Uh, or there's several, I just listed one there. Uh, but that um, sort of introduced this methods we'll see later. Okay, uh, this is the world's oldest university uh, in our Chicago, Japan, uh, which is Manabu's hometown, uh, uh, where he grew up, that is. Uh, and there's a long history of collaboration between Hawaii and Japan going back to Wes Peterson, uh, who was a faculty member here for many years. And um, as part of that, uh, I was able to go to Ashikaga and um, a wonderful little town. Uh, on the other hand, this is Hawaii, uh, just a view from a hike. Uh, we were out in Wales, uh, and uh, Manabu's wife, Akiko, said, this looks just like Japan, meaning that everything is volcanic. And uh, so I snapped a picture of this one, which looks like Japan, but in fact, uh, it's not. Uh, my house is more or less straight back in the center, although you probably can't see it. Um, so, um, OK. I'll talk about uh, deletion codes. So let's imagine two soft-spoken Japanese girls speaking to a deaf old man. Uh, what kind of error can you get? Uh, so if they, of course, we don't really speak in zeros and ones, but let's assume we speak in a sequence of zeros and ones. Uh, and suppose they sent the message 1001. Zero, zero, one. Uh, one thing you can have is a, a bit flip, uh, which is simply that what's supposed to be a zero gets read as a one or vice versa. Uh, the second thing is an erasure. So the receiver knows there's something there, but he doesn't know what it is. Uh, and then the other two possibilities 
our uh, deletion, you just simply miss out. It's supposed to be five things and you get four. Or insertion, uh, the receiver, that's me, makes up something uh, that isn't there and it just gets inserted. And so the question is how you decipher uh, such a message. Uh, for, for example, the other day I was talking to uh, Akari, who's the one little girl on the left, and uh, she said, a whole things and then baby ducks. So I have to fill in what's not there. Uh, I don't hear the rest of it, but I figure out, of course, that there's baby ducks on the canal behind their house. Um, okay, so let's say exactly what we mean here. Uh, a single deletion error correcting code uh, is one that's capable of correcting an error. So throughout, n will denote the number of places. So a string of zeros and ones of n zeros and ones. So in this case, there'd be five. And the code is some subset of two to the fifth, or more generally, two to the n. Um, now, if you look at this code and you look at the deletions, that is, you remove one of the symbols, so as you now have a length four, uh, can you figure out what was sent? And, uh, well, you can. Because, for example, if you get from the third line 0001, the only thing that has that as the deletion is 10001. And so you know that that's what was sent. Uh, now, what you need then is that no two code words, okay, again, all the length five words have a deletion in common. Uh, in this case, all 16 um, two to the fourth words are, are present, but that's not required. All it requires that nothing be duplicated. Okay, so um, formalizing this a little bit, take a vector x and two to the n, okay, being a, a sequence of zeros and ones, then the deletion surface, or just deletions, are all the y's you can get by deleting one of the symbols. You delete one of the ones or one of the zeros, but you don't get to say which one. It's just one of them is gone. Okay. And the insertion surface is what you get by inserting something in. You put a zero or one, but again, you don't know where it went. It's just there. And a subset of these words is, is a single deletion error correcting code abbreviated that way if no two code words have a common deletion. And the wonderful lemma from Levenstein's paper uh, is that if two words have a common deletion equivalent to having a common insertion. Okay. Uh, and it follows that if you take a code which is capable of correcting, say, T deletions, uh, is capable of correcting T insertions. Or more generally, you define a distance, uh, which is simply the, take two random words like X and Y, and the distance between them is the number of insertions and deletions it takes to get from one to the other. And you can basically correct half that number. Okay. So we're asking that no two things be two apart that are in the code, but you could do this as well with four apart and then have a double deletion uh, corrections. And you can do them in any order. I'll talk about insertions or deletions, an insertion of deletion, an insertion of deletion, and so forth. Uh, Moreover, in this wonderful paper, Levenstein gives a decoding algorithm for the Varshama Tenendolz codes. Uh, for the obvious reason, we'll refer to those as VT codes because we can't pronounce the words. 
But um, uh, so this is a code that was introduced for slightly different purposes in 1965 uh, by those two guys. And we'll decide what they are in a minute, but they give you uh, single deletion error codes and um, that are particularly nice. Okay. Uh, the Hamming weight, which we'll use throughout this thing, is just the number of ones. Okay, so if you have a word, uh, example, if you got one, zero, one, zero, one, and three zeros, uh, that has weight three. And there's no point in writing all those zeros. You write one, three, and five to indicate that uh, uh, that vector uh, or that, that word. And we're going to use that system, uh, which has a lot of advantages. And then if you take a vector like this, uh, we have the function rho of x, which simply adds up a1 up to ak. Uh, this this is not new. <laughs> this is again from Levenstein's paper, actually from uh, Tenengold's and Varshamov. Um, and so we'll consider rho of x mod m. So just continue with the example. Uh, if you have one three five, okay, then uh, you add them up, you get nine. If you want to consider that mod six, it's three. It's that easy. Okay. Um, so the question we want to address is what is the largest size of a single deletion error correcting code of length n? Okay, so we call that max of n, and the conjecture is that the VT codes are the largest. Okay, uh, this has been a conjecture since 1966. So it's not exactly new. And I'm going to talk about some progress on it and how we're working on it. Okay. But first of all, let's say what the codes are. It's real simple. Uh, a VT code is a set of all X in uh, such that rho of X is equal to L mod N plus one. So in fact, there are of course N plus one different choices of L. And um, and that's what VTL of N is. And for example, the code we saw earlier is VT0 of 5. Now you can see that real easily. If you just look at the words listed there, uh, the first thing is the zero word, which uh, are the all zeros. That, of course, adds up to 0 mod 5, uh, mod 6, n plus 1. Uh, 1, 2, and 3 is 6. 1 and 5 is 6. 2 and 4 is 6. And the other two add up to 12, which is 0 mod 6. And uh, the observation, uh, again, from when I graduated in high school, is that these are all single deletion error correcting codes. And the reason is simple. Uh, and that is that if you take two words, x and x prime, uh, then rho of x minus rho of x prime is at most n. And it could be pretty much anything from zero to n. So if the distance bet between the rows is n plus one, they don't have a common deletion. Okay. Um, so I'm using the word distance, but really it's just a function value. Okay. Uh, in the example above, uh, all the deletions of these things uh, change the value of rho by at most five. So if you go six away, you've got a different word, or it doesn't have the same deletion. Okay. So um, lower bound on the size because if these are error correcting codes, deletion error correcting codes, then that's a lower bound on the largest size. In other words, uh, max n plus of n is bigger than vt0. And on the other hand, 
If you take two of the n words and you partition them into n plus one equivalence classes, uh, the, uh, then you're going to have uh, two of the n over n plus one in at least one of the classes by the pigeonhole principle. Okay. Uh, by the way, I, I see a typo up there. It should really say that uh, rho of a deletion of x minus rho of a deletion of x prime is at most n. That's just a typo. I copied it wrong. Okay. That, sorry. Um, okay. And then there's an upper bound, which is 2 to the n over n, which I don't understand as well. Uh, but it shows you that it, pretty much you know what the size of these things are. Uh, somewhere between 2 to the n over n plus 1 and 2 to the n over n. And the upper bound can be refined slightly. So it's actually closer to the bottom. Okay, or the bottom. Okay. Um, so uh, here's some fun facts about the VT codes. First of all, uh, they're almost always very close to the bottom one. Okay. VT0 is always the biggest one, and VT sub 1 is always the smallest one, and this is in between. Okay. So the reason we're saying that VT0 is the lower bound is because that's the biggest one. And generally speaking, they're different. So if I look, for example, at n equals 12, uh, VT0 has 316 elements. VT1 has 315. All of them except zero have 315. Uh, so they're not all the same size, and we want VT0 for the largest one. Uh, and only when it's a power of two, for example, if n is seven or 15, uh, so one less than a power of two, then we get that um, uh, they're all the same. Okay. Uh, for example, if seven, they all have size 32. Um, and we have a formula for the size of it. This is obviously not very useful, <laughs> at least to me, but the formula is due to Richard Stanley, whom you've seen recently. Okay. Um, now, each VTL is a perfect code, meaning that all the n minus one element words appear as deletions of these things. Uh, that's one way of proving uh, that it's, in fact, an error correcting code. Okay. So again, the conjecture from 1966 is that this is the largest size of a code. Okay. Well, from n up to seven, Neil Sloan was able to prove that before 2000. Uh, about 2002, Borgate added eight, and then Botinko and his group at Texas A&M extended this to 10. So I'll put this in a chart in a second, but in fact, the conjecture is true for n at most uh, 10. And uh, so, um, here, here you see uh, lower bound, VT0. If you can get the upper bound down to the same thing, then of course, that's what it is. Okay. So the exciting new news, when Manabu came here uh, last summer, uh, the upper bound for 11 was 173. And uh, so the question was, is it 173 or 172? Three years ago, the upper bound was 174. And I'm going to describe how this comes down as in the process. But um, so, and this is pretty new. Uh, Akasho, who finished the problem, uh, was here about last November 
And it wasn't done that. He sent us an email sometime early this year saying he'd finished it and got it down. And we'll discuss how. Uh, the conjecture looks good so far. But remember, this is uh, in progress over, what, 60 years. OK, so OK. Now, it's not unique. If it was unique, at least you'd know something. But if you look at these two words, and these are sort of typical of the exceptions, uh, if you take the top one and delete the zero, you get the same thing, uh, uh, the zero between the ones, uh, as if you deleted a zero at the beginning of the Y. So these two words have a common deletion, but in fact, all the deletions of Y are already deletions of X. So if X was in a, a code, you could toss and just use Y which means uh, if you had a code of maximal size that had X in it, you'd have a different one with Y in it and the same size. Um, and a, a student of Manabu's uh, condo has generalized this, but the, the principle doesn't change. You can sometimes toss words, replace them by the same number, and you get the same size code, but the same thing. Okay, so I want to describe the process here, which is pretty neat. Uh, uh, namely, you make a graph. So the vertices are all binary words of length n. So it's a big graph, okay? Because it's not like n equals you know, 12 or 13 or something. And you put an edge between two words if they have a common deletion. Uh, you have to sort of imagine this because it's too big to draw. And then what is a deletion error correcting code? It's a bunch of vertices with no edges between them. In other words, an independent set. So now you're able to use the methods for finding uh, independent sets in graphs and, and particular methods and estimates due to Lotsi Lovash. Um, so given a code, C, uh, put x of j equal to 1 uh, if j is in C. Now I'm thinking of j here uh, as a binary number. OK, so 0 is all zeros. 1 and all zeros is 1. 0, 1 and all zeros is 2 and so forth. So we just use the numbers from 1 to 2 to the n minus 1 uh, as a, a um, index set. And so if you put it. If it's in the code, the problem can just be to maximize uh, the sum of the xi's or the xj's uh, subject to the condition that xj is either 0 or 1 and xi plus xj is at most 1. Okay, uh, in other words, one of them can, they can both be 0 or one of them can be 1, but they can't both be 1. It's that easy. Uh, except of course, it's not that easy. So the first thing I've done is just repeat the previous thing. You can change it to a linear programming problem. Uh, and then you want to maximize it. Instead of requiring xj to be either 0 or 1, just require it to be between 0 and 1. Um, and still the condition xi plus xj plus 1, and that's a strictly linear programming uh, and so you solve it, for example, for n equals 11, and you get a maximum of about 175. And you can actually refine that uh, down to about 174. You're still stuck because you want 172. What you have to do is use mixed integer programming. That is, use the single dagger, the top thing, edges, uh, some edges, and uh, the bottom one, the integer, so the integer part for the, some edges and the linear programming part for others. And 
all, not all edges are created equal. If you think about a word like a one and all zeros, it only has two deletions. You look at a whole random word like zero, one, one, zero, whatever, it has lots of different deletions. So the things that have lots of deletions, you may have to use the top one. The things that don't, you can use the bottom. How you decide which, well, that's the, the art of it. Uh, so in 2019, uh, Albert No, uh, it's always referred to as Dr. No from the James Bond movie, uh, got the upper bound <laughs> down to 173988 uh, from 174. Okay. That means 173 is the maximum because it's an integer. Okay. And then after his visit here, Nakasho, uh, refined that further and got it down to 172.99, which means the maximum is 172, because that's also the lower bound. <laughs> so that's really a neat approach, but it's hard. And these guys work very hard for N equal 11 just to get it down to here. Um, so uh, that's pretty exciting. And like I say, we started the seminar, we call it the 173 problem, but it's not a problem anymore, it's been done. Okay, I wanna change gears slightly and talk about K of N codes. Uh, K of N means every word has exactly the same number of ones. Uh, for example, three of eight code has length eight and every code word has three ones and five zeros, okay? And you can get codes like that. Uh, here's an example of one, uh, which we'll see again in a second. But this is also a single deletion error correcting code. And um, so we just asked the same question for a K of N codes. A K of N codes been investigated a lot of respects, but not necessarily with respect to deletion codes. Um, I want to start with the easiest possible case, the two of N. Okay. Uh, so let's look at uh, two of N codes. So again, you've got length N vectors. You can't do one of N because if you got one, two different things with one, they both have a deletion to all zero. So that doesn't count. You got to have at least two. So this is the, and so initially we just searched for them and found this. Uh, and in fact, we can show pretty easily that the maximum size of one of these codes is just the integer part of three N minus two over four. Okay. Uh, now the lower bound is real easy because if you look down there, you see the code written out. Uh, one, two, is the first one, three, four, and then two, five. Then you add four. You add four to one, two, you get five, six. You add four to three, four, you get seven, eight. And you add four to two, five, you get six, nine, and so forth. You just keep adding four. So you're getting three out of every four numbers. That's the three in over four. With a little adjustment for how you start, that's three in minus two. That's too easy. So all we gotta do is show that three n minus two over four is an upper bound. And I wanna sketch that because we're gonna do arguments like it, except we're not gonna do the arguments like it because they're way harder, but the principles are the same. Okay. So if you have a two of n code, there's good code words that look like k, k plus one. So What's good about them is they have only one deletion. Okay. Uh, so if you look at just say one, two, got one, one, and all zeros. If you delete the first one, you get a one and all zeros. But if you delete the second one, you get a one and all zeros. <laughs> it's the same thing. It doesn't matter which one you, 
you cross out. Um, so that's good. Another thing, you can't have one, two, and two, three in the code. Uh, because you leave a zero for one and a one from the other. Uh, sorry, leave a zero from different places in the two, and you wind up with the same deletion. So you cannot have consecutive ones. Anything that isn't of that form uh, has two deletions of, uh, of weight one, okay? You delete one of the ones, you get one word. You delete the other one, you get a different one. So if you put those two things together, we said you could not have consecutive good words like one, two, and two, three. So you get at most half the possible number of good words, that's n over two. Uh, on the other hand, if you count the number of weight one deletions, in other words, what you get by taking the two ones, eliminating one of them, the good words have one, the bad words have two, and there's only n minus one words of length n minus one with one, one in them. Okay. You take those two equations and add them, uh, you get 2g plus 2b is 3n minus 2 over 4. Uh, g plus b is the total number of code words. And so you get the upper bound, 3n minus 2 over 4. Now, that's not real exciting, but it's pretty cool that it's that easy. And it gives you exactly what you want. OK, so uh, following Ryan Graham and, and Neil Sloan, Let's define these sets J of K, L, N, N with four parameters. Uh, K you recognize as the, um, uh, the weight, the Hamming weight. N is the length. Uh, and now you look at words where rho of L, rho of X is L mod M. Those are the parameters. Uh, and, uh, the theorem is for two less than or equal to k less than n over two, j of l n minus k plus one n is a k of n uh, single deletion error corrected code. Now, if that was n plus one instead of n minus k plus one, you would just have the uh, same thing as the VT codes and it'd be no surprise. Okay, so the change here is instead of n the modulus being n plus one is now n minus k plus one, which gives you a denser set of code words. Okay. So the code we saw earlier uh, with k equal three and equal eight, well, by amazing calculation, n minus k is six. And if you take L equal to zero and look at those words, all those words have rho of x equal to zero mod six. Again, rho of x is just the sum of the entries. So for example, one plus four plus seven is 12, which is zero mod six. Okay, likewise, uh, well, three plus seven plus eight is 18, which is zero mod six. And the reason is exactly the same. The thing where I pointed out the typo, uh, the, deletions of these word, two different words uh, are at most, they have a common deletion, then the two words are um, n minus k plus one apart, not n plus one apart. So in other words, they can, and the reason is because they're the words of the same length, okay? So that means this is a lower bound for the maximum size of a uh, K of N single deletion error correcting code. Uh, namely, you take all the possible words like that, of which they're N choose K, split them up into N minus K plus one uh, equivalence classes, modulo N minus K plus one, and that's the maximum size. One thing you might ask is, when is this independent of L? 
For example, for the previous problem, uh, we saw for seven and 15, and more generally to the n minus one, uh, the size of the VT codes was constant. Otherwise, it was different. Okay, 316 versus 315 for 12. And it turns out that's not hard. Um, so if you have a prime power, it's exactly when n is not one mod p. Uh, so for example, for nine, uh, if k equals nine, p would be three, and you need n equal to zero or one uh, mod three, then codes would have uh, the same size. And if it's not zero or one, in other words, if it's two mod three, they have different sizes. So I'm not sure if that's important, but the proof is really, really neat. And the fact is pretty neat. Okay, and then for composites, you just add it. For 10, you has to pass for both two and five, for example. Okay, so this is a generic upper bound. You take the good and bad code words case earlier, and uh, you get this thing. That is not a very intuitive formula, if you ask me, on the right. But if you look at it, how it actually works, it is. Okay, so here we go. This is for weight three code words. And now we see the lower bound is n squared minus n over six, and the upper bound is n squared minus three over six. Uh, so they're not very far apart. Uh, they're both n squared over six minus something, and one was minus more than the other. Okay. And so that complicated right hand side simplifies to n squared minus three over six in this case. And now you just are doing the same trick. You start at six, say, uh, and uh, the lower bound uh, is the maximum size of one of these uh, J codes, J of L and M N minus two, N minus two here, because it's N minus K plus one. Uh, and the upper bound is from the good and bad code words argument, only a lot harder now because there's three more possibilities. But anyway, uh, and up to n equals 11, the upper bound and the lower bound are the same. When you get to n equals 12, they're one apart, and 13, they're one apart, and 14, they're one apart. Okay. Um, so the analog of the maximum that would be that it's the lower bound and it ain't. It's the upper bound. <laughs> uh, and I have no idea what those codes are. It's just a computer search. It pops out a random bunch of things. And they're a code of size 23, which is not the one that gave you the lower bound, the one with modular arithmetic. Hmm. Well, it is what, and that was a surprise. It also tends to indicate maybe this conjecture isn't as good as we thought it was. Uh, briefly, if you go to four, uh, you can see they're not quite as close to the lower bounds, the upper bounds are, are different. The right hand side still has the same form. Uh, that is n cubed over 24 um, and then minus something. And in, it's just that this minus more for the lower bound than it is for the upper bound. Uh, now, we don't know the exact value for n equals 10. There's a, a question for a weak master student. So, <laughs> right. Um, don't have one right now, but uh, have historically. Okay, and for n equals five, we don't even have any exact values, just some estimates. Uh, by the way, the lower bound 
stars at n over two. So um, for if any for five, we really should be using ten as a starting place. Okay, you can do lower ones, but it doesn't count for much. Okay, so the main question is, can we leverage this into something to try to look at not just k of n, but the whole problem? Same with deletion error correcting codes. And here's the first brilliant idea. Skip every other uh, thing. So only do words, well, C0 will only be the zero vector, but do wait two words and then do wait four words, okay? Because it, the, you can pack them closer than you can, or closer than n plus one. Namely, you can pack them n minus k plus one. And so maybe if you do this, uh, you can win. And the answer is you don't win, you lose, <laughs> okay? Um, so you can see what happens pretty typically here at, uh, 12, which is our first open case now, you're trying to get 316 and you do this. Uh, and by the way, you have to sort of flip the codes for the upper half, but that's easy enough. And we get 260, not close. Asymptotically, they're the same, but asymptotically means some big numbers. Uh, I get about 97% for 10 to the 100 or something. Well, obviously, you're not really going to do this 100. It's just an asymptotically to show that it's not as bad as we thought. Okay. Now, you could get smarter because that was not very smarter. You could just take the words, say, for, for uh, n equal 12 and try to stick in a couple of closer words that weight six and leave most of them the same. And you can show that you always lose it this way too, but not nearly as bad. Okay, instead of getting 260, uh, or for 315, I forget what the number was, it was, uh, uh, yeah, 260. Uh, you can stick in an extra close code word, at, or two close code words at, uh, rank six make some adjustments but the adjustments you make for adding those two words is you have to remove four words and so instead of having 315 because remember we're using vt4 which has not 316 but 315 these add two good words have to subtract four you're down to 313. so using this method you can easily get vt minus a few of course we're trying to get vt plus something and that didn't work the next plan would be to use what i call the uh a spinal tap method uh, you take the top part to be vt zero and remember at the bottom for weight three we found some codes that were bigger than we expected just by computer search. So try to stick those on the bottom and um, glue them together uh, to make a code uh, that has something unexpected at the bottom, the middle part being a VT code, and the top part would be the unexpected part duplicated. And well, so far that doesn't work either. Uh, N equal 12, 13, and 14, you do the search and you get only the VT code. Uh, so 14 last night, it ran about eight days. So um, 15 may be slow, but uh, we're looking. So the conclusion is we're trying to. Um, find any way to construct a counterexample. I think a counterexample exists uh, just based on this, but we sure haven't found it and we're not very close yet. Okay, a couple of 
extra topics. You can do double deletion error correcting codes. Uh, and we have not looked a whole lot at that. Uh, but it was interesting to try to do the, um, uh, the three of 12 code. So if you're allowed to delete ones, then you better have at least three elements. So here's a double deletion error correcting code. If you don't remove any two symbols from here, you get different words. And the estimates, unfortunately, they don't match. So if you go back to what we had before for the, the two of n codes, we had three fourths in and three fourths in minus something. Now we got five ninths and seven ninths. The bottom part is probably right. If you look at the code at the bottom, one, two, three, three, four, six. Okay. All that is fine. And if you go past the first five code words and add nine, you get the next word. Okay. So add nine to one, two, three, you get 10, 11, 12. And then the next one, if you add nine to three, four, six, uh, you get 12, 13, and 15. I can do this. And so in this way, we get the lower estimate. Uh, I'm almost positive that's right, but I can't get the upper estimate down below that. Again, you need another master student at this point, don't have it. If you want something harder, uh, you can try to do uh, quantum codes. Quantum codes definitely are harder, uh, but Nabu has found a way to, to take classical codes and to ratchet them up to quantum deletion codes. So for a quantum computer, a quantum deletion would actually correspond to like a photon missing. Okay, now missing, of course, doesn't mean it's in your pocket. It means it was not. Okay, but nonetheless, um, so you can use classical codes uh, to do these, and that's sort of a separate project uh, that's going on simultaneously, but I've been more involved in this side of it. Okay, so, well, there's Manabo and Akiko hiking the pillboxes, which Kira has seen before, and uh, <laughs> uh, we're enjoying their visit, and we're still working on the problem. So, thank you. Thank you very much.